This is how the full grid looks. Glenn Seaton and Greg Murphy share the front row. Peter Brock and John Bauer the second. Third row, Alan Jones, Dick Johnson. Fourth row, Wayne Gardner and Larry Perkins. We go back behind Larry Perkins on the fifth row. It's his teammate Russell Engel. He shares it with Mark Scaife, Tony Longhurst and Mark Larkham off row six. Row seven is John Faulkner and Terry, Terry Finnegan. Row eight, Greg Crick and Bob Pearson. Back to row nine, Trevor Ashby stepping in in uh, place of Steve Reed, Stephen Richards, Kevin Heffernan and Darren Hossack off row 10. Row 11 is John Cotter and Neil Shrimby. Our row 12, Wayne Russell and Richard Moore. It's a big field of V8s here today at Eastern Creek. Lots and lots of V8 supercars here ready to do battle. Well, the unbelievable has happened again. It happened at Sandown and it's happened again. It's either a gearbox or a diff problem. Mark Osler, have you got any information for us? I just spoke to Jeff Gretsch, the team manager. He's shaking his head in absolute disbelief. He said that Greg radioed in and said something has broken in the car. I assume that's a driveline failure of some sort. But this team down here, they are absolutely shattered. They can't believe the hoodoo over this young Kiwi driver. When I said it's happened again, I'm referring to Greg Murphy. He has pulled off just before the warm-up lap. We're getting ready for a start, and it is just devastating for the young HRT driver. We're getting set for a start. Race one, round six of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Seaton is on the front row all by himself. He doesn't get away to the best start. Oh, Have a look escape. at Mark Scaife. Whoa, what a start for Scaife. Right up the outside was Mark Scaife, oh. and he leads the pack into the field. Can you believe it? How good was that? A sensational deal. In the Gibson Motorsport Commodore, he leads the field. Joining us in commentary, he's back from North America, is Neil Crompton. Neil, how about that start? Well, yeah, I think Scapey actually might have started before the rest of them, but whatever it worked, he's in the lead at the moment with Glenn Seaton right behind. We're getting tremendous on-board pictures looking at Cito hard at work. And there's Mark Scape in the lead in the Australian 1000 backed classic car. We then go back to third spot. It's AJ oh, Alan Jones. There's a little bit of contact there between Perkins and one of the Shell Helix cars. But Scape has done the bolt. Seaton now comes up and also Jones. And he will be black flagged. They're indicating on the start finish rostrum that Scape will receive the black flag on this lap. So he's going to have to report to pit lane and then join the field at the tail. Well, we won't bother getting too uh, more excited about that one then because he's going to be stepping out and the lead will go to Seaton. I think he's, he must have seen Tim Schenken flinch and he's dropped the clutch and taken off. So we're getting good on-board uh, shots here from the Ford Credit, Ford Credit Falcon of Glenn Seaton watching Mark Scape, but he will not be in that lead position for too much longer. For somebody to make such a brilliant start like that, so much better from that position on the grid, you'd have to... Uh, uh, there's anticipation and there's anticipation. Well, he got a start like a jet drag car, didn't he? He just went straight past them. These are the pictures from the front of Glenn Seaton's Ford Credit Falcon. As we come onto the main straight, we go on board with Scape. He is coming into the pits for a stop-go penalty. And he, he knew it already. He didn't even bother. He's been radioed. They've told him not to bother about wasting any time. So we're on board with Mark now. So Glenn Seaton takes over the lead effectively as Mark goes down to the stop-go penalty area at the end of the pit lane. Well, he's going to be very disappointed with that. He uh, could have got a lot of points if he remained in that position and had a good race, but he's going to get a lot less now. The stop go, there he is. It's only momentar uh, momentarily stopped, and then he's back away. The Australian 1000 Classic car back out on the track. We get back to the front Seaton of the pack. Jones, Jones is running in second. His return drive, that's really good for him. Seaton, Jones, Johnson, Brock and Gardner, they're your top five at the moment. Yeah, you look at Ingle uh, behind Gardner. He's uh, definitely giving you look, look here. I think we might see a little bit of aggro here. Well, this has got away. This is probably one of the best starts to the V8 supercar round that we have seen. There he is, your top five, your Shell Helix race score, your top left corner of your screen. Gardner would be happy about sitting there in fifth position. Faulkner, way back in tenth, but he's working his way up. It was extraordinarily close after qualifying yesterday as Wayne just locks the rear brakes ever so slightly in the hairpin, and that's just opened the gap enough for Russell Ingle to have a look now at Peter Brock and look at Russell on the inside he's got the headlights on and he's in a very good position to make life hard for the chief is there going to be contact oh, swap a little bit of paint but Gardner manages to hang on good work there by Wayne Gardner in the Coke Commodore he's holding Russell Ingle at bay Larry Perkins is behind him then we pick up Tony Longhurst followed by John Faulkner as they come onto the main straight this is a great battle further back this is fifth back through tenth eleventh twelfth yeah Ingle has got to get past Gardner because he's obviously can go quicker and uh, unless he does it in this lap, he's got no, no hope of catching uh, the leading bunch. If you look, they're pulling out quite a nice little gap now. 
The laser technology's laser speed at the end of the straight, almost 250 kilometres an hour. Neil, not quite top speed because we should be reaching up around 260 on. No, right at the moment everybody's still fumbling with everybody else, so it takes a little while for a couple of things to happen. You need to get your rhythm and you also need to get the temperatures and pressures up and at the moment the cars won't be in pristine shape. It'll be another couple of laps. Well, Glenn Seaton got away to a brilliant oh! I thought it wouldn't be long because uh, it looked like Gardner was struggling a bit and uh, Ingle was definitely getting impatient. Well, at Simmons Plains a couple of rounds ago they were hardly best mates and that's not going to help the relationship either. Oh, that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the enforcer, more like the extinguisher. Well, so Russell Ingle giving Gardner the big heave-ho. Here's the Shell Helix replay. Out of my way, WG, I'm ready to come through. Gardner goes around and luckily coming in contact with a tyre wall that could have been a lot uglier if it hit those concrete barriers. I think Russell's going to end up with those little targets on the side yeah. of his car. You Here's know. another uh, <laughs> uh, version of that with the Shell Helix replay. You'll just see that Russell gives him a love tap and it's enough to send him on his way. I don't know that Uncle Tim Schenken's going to be too happy about that one. So Russell may have been a slightly naughty boy there, but it is hard, fast racing. Oh. No beg your pardons. Looks like it's only rear bumper damage on the WGR Coca-Cola Commodore. So it doesn't seem to be affecting its performance, but obviously Wayne has now dropped out of the contention. Well, let's go down to Mark Osler. He's with Greg Murphy. Yeah, and a very dis disappointed Greg Murphy. Uh, Lee, Greg, thought that hoodoo was over. What happened? I have no idea. Just uh, dropped the clutch and she was all over from there. No gears, so it's broken a drive shaft or something or a diff. I'm not, I, I don't know. It just wouldn't move, so it didn't even move that time, I don't think. But after, after Simmons Plains, that brilliant run down there, you thought that your luck might have changed. Yeah, it was looking good. You know, Winton wasn't too good for us, but um, we thought we were still in with a shot, but now it's, it's over for sure. There's no way we'll be coming back from this. Oh, thanks, mate. Well, I think Greg Murphy's going to be pushing Mark Larkin for the best run of oh, bad luck. Oh, terrible. Talk about the black cat syndrome. It's, I reckon it spat the back out of the diff again, but having, because there's a little pool of... Uh, uh, fluid or something on the ground where his uh, car stopped. I noticed in the background behind Greg we saw Graham Brown, one of the Bridgestone uh, senior management and senior engineers. He was quite ill a couple of weeks ago and has made an appearance here this weekend at Eastern Creek. It's good to have Graham back. He's back, I think, to almost full health, so we wish him well. Hope he's OK. Well, Seaton is leading the way quite commandingly. We then go back to Alan Jones and the Komatsu Falcon. That's a great run for him. And Dick Johnson is up in third position. That's his best run of the season today. We go on board with Dick Johnson in the Shell Helix Falcon, watching AJ Hart at work in front of him. We're currently sitting in third place with Dick Johnson. A couple of interesting things here. First of all, we've got two Bridgestone cars leading. I know there's been a lot of discussion about tyre performance in the series this year, and it also appears to be Ford territory at the moment, guys. There's really not a Holden in sight. Well, the last three years here at Eastern Creek, it's been Holden territory. Back in uh, 94, Brock won, 95, Scape won, 96, Lowndes won. So that could change today. I was just looking at the performance. If you look at the performance of DJ's car against uh, AJ's car, it's very little in it. That's right, and of course, as we look at Dick working pretty hard here, heading over the top of the tunnel, uh, you've got a car here on Dunlop tyres, which are now the English Dunlop tyres. Yeah. Last year, we were running with the Japanese Dunlop tyres, and I think Dunlop have done a tremendous job this year to really regather themselves and focus hard on trying to get some better performance out of their tyres. And you have to say, in this early stage, lap 5 of 12, that the Dunlop has at least got uh, equal performance with the Bridgestone tyre in front of it that Alan's running. There's the Komatsu Falcon of Alan Jones, and here comes Dick Johnson. He's got yes. the run through, and Dick is up into second position. Great work there by Dick Johnson in the Shell Helix Falcon. Persistence has finally paid off, and look at this bunch all fighting it out for the minor placings. Now, Dick's got the best part of four and a half seconds to make up with five laps to run on Glenn Seaton, but he's got good pace, just grabs a little bit of H2O, sets himself up back to fifth gear from sixth, on the brakes very hard from 260 k's, on the exit he's doing 215, accelerates back up to about 220, here's a replay of the passing manoeuvre. So Dick gets a good exit out of that right hand, second gear corner, it gets him up alongside Jonesy, who's now on the dirty side of the track, got nowhere to go. See you later, AJ. And if you fancy yourself where this camera is right now, sitting right alongside Dick Johnson, we've got a competition coming up later in the program where you can win a ride with Dick Johnson, who is in sizzling form at the moment here at Eastern Creek, sitting in second. It's his best run of the championship this year so far. Oh, bow. Bow up on the inside of Peter Brock, so the Shell Helix Falcons are coming good.
They're going extremely well, and Neil, the Dunlop Rubber seems to be working quite effectively as well. Yes, they've done a tremendous job, as I said before. Steve Ashmore in the UK from Dunlop has worked hard together with uh, Jeff Moorhead, Russell Stuckey here, and they've really knuckled down. They had a difficult year last year, and we talk a lot about tyres in this category because it's really the remaining element that can change. The cars are so highly developed, the drivers are so good, there's nothing between any of them. The cars have been so stable in terms of the rule package that nothing can really change other than tyre development. And that's the area that we're seeing constant change. Mark Osler's got more for us on that subject. Yeah, it's interesting hearing what you're saying there, Neil. I was talking to Graham Brown, the Bridgestone uh, tyre engineer. He was saying that the tyre they're running here, the same one they use at Bathurst, Simmons Plains of Phillip Island, and Eastern Creek was a very important track in the development phase of that tyre. So I, I guess so. that's why it's looking so good under Glen Seaton at the moment. That's right. The thing about Eastern Creek, Mark, as you well know, is there's a lot of corners that have got a long ongoing radius and the tyre takes a lot of load and an enormous amount of heat. It's not a stop-go circuit like, for example, Winton last weekend. And that's why last weekend, for example, Dunlop was very strong and this weekend the Bridgestone's been very strong. Each tyre has its own strengths and weaknesses at different tracks and that's really the intriguing part of the battle at the moment. Keep your eyes on the battle here. Speaking of a battle, John Bow working the back of... Uh Alan Jones pretty hard. There's also another battle rustling on yes. a bit of rock. JB. <laughs> what was that about three thousand between those guys? I would then? say that so. Was close. Oh, look at that! So uh, Jones, you would, leave, move I would not leave the gap open that wide because JB's a tiger and he'll definitely nail you. The Shell Hillix Falcons are on fire here in Eastern Creek. They're going exceptionally well running. Second and fourth at the moment. The Komatsu Falcon of Alan Jones sitting in third. Brock, Ingle. Then we go back to Larry Perkins. Keep your eyes on the Castrol Commodores. They're not out of this by a long shot, but time is running out because we're only got a little bit over two laps left to run. Neil, I reckon the, the, best, uh, the best chance for JB would be uh, going around the three sort of left-handers before the start and finish straight. If he gets a good run out of those, yeah. get a good uh, slip stream. That's a good call. There's the gap. You can see Glenn Seaton comfortably in front of the pack at the moment. It's five and a half seconds as he heads down the main straight. We're lap nine of 12. There's a lot of daylight between Glenn Seaton and Dick Johnson, who's in turn got quite a fair old gap. There's Glenn hard at work chewing on the hose as his customary position. Great skill. Very fast through this left-hander. Watched him down there in the warm-up this morning, and he's really on fire. His car's well balanced. Oh, look at this. John bowed down the inside yep. of Alan Jones. So you were right, Barry. Got a good run at the top of the circuit, and that translated to track position at the bottom. Yeah, I think he's had... Oh, look at... Uh, Ingle on the inside. <laughs> yes, got him. Gotcha. Russell Ingle, and here comes Perkins. Uh, he tries the outside option on Peter Brock. Unsuccessful that time through, but the enforcer is starting to creep and crawl his way up. Jones is his next victim on his list. Where did you blokes invent that? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't us. Oh, it wasn't us. Get the blame for most things, but that wasn't us. <laughs> so this is the battle. It's on oh, and he's got it. Yes. Russell Ingle's nice not stopping for anybody. Have a look at him go. Now Brock's on the inside of Jones as well. So Alan Jones is under siege at the moment out there. Yeah, it's not a comfortable race for Alan. He may be just quite hasn't got the chassis balance or he may have some other form of problem but they're nibbling at him and they're getting to him which is a shame because it was a tremendous start early on and he's been very competitive this year he's worked hard to bring new sponsors onto his car and stay in business and be out there and be competitive and it's been a pretty fair act well talking to uh, the shell helix teams public relations officer david siegel he said we've had a few problems earlier on in the year but don't discount us at Eastern Creek because we reckon we're going to be coming right about that time of the year and he's proven himself correct. Well, Dick has actually on the last lap done a 133.7, which is a couple of tenths quicker than Glenn, so he's not relenting. Two laps to go. Lights on for Russell Ingle. He's on the charge. He's the best placed Holden at the moment, so it's Bridgestone, Dunlop, Dunlop, Bridgestone. Difficult day, it seems, for the Yokohama runners. Wayne Gardner is back in 12th position after his uh, problem early on with Russell Ingle. And of course, Mark Scape got off to a shocker. Greg <laughs> <laughs> Crick in the Alcare air conditioning car with a few problems by the looks of things. Heading down the main straight, a lot of smoke bellowing from that car. But Russell Ingle's got to drive the wheels off this car. He can't allow Glenn Seaton to get the big points jump on him this time round. There's only 20 points at the top of the championship table. Seaton on 362 and Ingle on 342. So Russell needs to get the best possible result in each of the races. 
As Neil was saying earlier on, it'll be interesting to see what uh, Tim Schenkin, the guy from Cams, comes up with as far as uh, a slap on the uh, legs for Russell Ingle. Yeah, it's always hard to call because both guys are fighting hard and obviously one can defend and one can push hard, but uh, it's a fine line for Tim to have to walk. I'm glad I don't have his job, but I think he'll probably have a bit of a chat at the end of the race. Well, there on the windscreens, O'Brien profile, you can see Russell Ingle is the only man to win two of the six rounds of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship this year. I was saying earlier on, from five rounds, we've had four different winners. Ingle is the only man to win twice, and he's going very well here at the moment. Seaton's consistently lapping quicker than everybody else, which is uh, quite outstanding. This is a damn good job by both the Castrol guys. They've come through. It was funny, I was talking to Larry this morning before he went out, and he said, it's crazy, you know, we were so dominant last, last week. One lap to go now. He said, I didn't wash my ability off in the shower this morning. It's just, <laughs> this is what happens. This is how competitive this, this category is and how tyres play such a role in the game. 2.46K is our laser speed at the bottom of the straight. But this is a great performance because traditionally, guys, as you know, if you qualify back a little bit, it's very hard in this field to make placings, and these guys have done it. All, all credit to them. Well, let's not forget about our race leader, Glenn Seaton. We go on board with him now in the Ford Credit Falcon. Since the V8 formula started in 1993, no one has won more races than this guy. Glenn Seaton has won 36 races. He is the most winningest driver, if you could say that, since 1993 in the V8s, and he's going to add another one to his tally. You can say that. <laughs> I think, in actual fact, uh, the last time Glenn won the championship in 93, didn't he? Yeah, he's been very strong on quite a number of occasions. Interesting looking at him here. He's looking pretty comfortable and relaxed when we had the onboard shot. He's getting a speed readout on his digital dash. He's a little telltale flashing at him there in terms of what his peak revs was. Uh, these cars now have digital instrumentation. They don't have the old analogue instruments that look like DC3s inside. We had instruments all over the place. And Glenn's looking very comfortable with a balanced car and a good gap. It's 4.4 seconds. He's probably just eased out of it a little bit now. He knows he's got the points in the bag. Look out, we've got somebody down in there in the middle of the paddock uh, steaming and smiling. Great shot there of Eastern Creek in the background. You can see how fast, open and flowing the circuit is as Cito now prepares to face the chequered flag. He comes down the main straight. He had a clean sweep at Sandown. Could it be that way today? Glenn Seaton in the Ford Credit Falcon takes out race one here at Eastern Creek and he'll be delighted with that. It's a Shell Helix 2-3. They'll be delighted. Dick Johnson, his best result of the 96 season ahead of John Bowie's teammate, Russell Ingle. Well done after starting in ninth position, worked his way up into fourth ahead of Peter Brock. Alan Jones comes in for a good, strong finish as well. But there's the man of the moment after the first race, Glenn Seaton in the Ford Credit Falcon. He ran away with it. And with a new lap record, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, good job, Glenn. Uh, peeled about a second off the time that was previously held by my teammate Wayne Gardner. Yeah, I think that a lot of that's due to the fact the the new surface to Neil has made a lot of difference. They've resurfaced quite a lot of the circuit. Yeah, it's a little grippier. There's Dick. He'd be very happy with that. That's a good job. Oh, oh and Larko's got a problem Larko. with the front left, so it's peeled the tyre off for some reason. Maybe contact, maybe worn it out. Uh, but he brings it across the line and maybe gets some points out of it. Well, it certainly was a terrific race. Let's have a look at the final placings for you on the Shell Helix race score. Glenn Seaton in for the win ahead of Dick Johnson, John Bow, Russell Ingle and Peter Brock, as we said. We go back and have a look, six through ten. It was Perkins, Jones managed seven. Terry Finnegan, that's a terrific finish for Terry. Tony Longhurst and John Faulkner rounding out the top ten. You couldn't ask for a better race. We'll see if we can do it after this break.